So, we're going to be doing some MIDI drum sequencing today, and I were in in practicing this on my uh, myself and preparing for today. I kind of just did this uh, basic drum pattern here that I'll play for you. Okay. So it's just a four bar pattern. We're using some classic electronic drum sounds. Okay. But we're going to build something similar to this today. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So you want to go ahead and open up Logic. And uh, to get started, I'm going to start a new project myself. Good. My MIDI controller is working. So I'm going to do a new project. I'm going to close this one. Okay, uh, We're going to do a new software instrument. Instead of last time we did the ES1, I want you to use this time, where did it go? Ultra Beat, which you'll notice. Uh, Logic is nice that it gives you these kind of like descriptions in parentheses as far as what that is. You'll see that it has, is actually a drum synth. And we're going to do the stereo version. That's what you want to create on a new track, okay? It gives you this little icon that looks kind of like a drum machine. If you're not familiar with what a drum machine is, this is a pretty good facsimile of an Akai drum machine, okay? Uh, but we're going to use a different uh, drum kit. Hopefully you have, if this library panel is open, you can, again, you can hide or show it here. But look in drum kits, and I want you to look for Boutique 808. Does everybody have that? Because that's the one we're going to use today. So Boutique 808, and this this combination of numbers 808, does that ring a bell with anybody? Have you ever heard of an 808? Yes. Kayana's nodding her head, Shane is saying yes, but son of us is saying no. So where where have you heard of an 808 before, Kayana? As far as like, the main Okay, and what genres of music? Hip hop. Hip hop, yes. Uh, pop. Electronic, house, techno. Okay, so uh, the 808 is actually a very well known, a very famous uh, device, and I've got a link in my notes to, in my notes to both the Wikipedia page, but also a YouTube video where someone has uh, sequenced a few famous beats that are, are known with the 808. Uh, it's 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 well known enough that you will off you will sometimes hear. Uh, performers make reference to their 808 or their 808 beats, basically, much like they will make reference to a, their guitar or that sort of thing, basically. So it's maybe not as common as re references to guitars in lyrics. But if you've ever heard a performer talking about an 808, what they're talking about is actually a drum machine, a physical drum machine that was produced around the early 80s, okay, uh, by Kakahashi, the same Kakahashi that was involved in the creation of MIDI, okay. So that's the connection. That's the historical connection I want to make for you there, basically. Okay, but if you've got the boutique 808 selected, you should be able to use our drum pads. Okay, so you should be able to have these uh, drum pads. Is everybody getting sounds out of these? Okay, so these. These drum pads are creating a note on and a note off event for you. A note on when you press it and a note off when you release it, okay? Same thing happens with your keys on the keyboard, note on, note off. And you might find that uh, shifting the octave down is best for these uh, drum patterns. It gets you to the kick drum here. Okay. So you can play patterns uh, with your keyboard using uh, either the keys here or the drum pads here. I guarantee you've heard these sounds before and if you've been listening to pop music at all in, the li in your lifetimes, okay? Yes? What now? Oh, uh, I, you are up here. So keep pushing down until they go out, and then push down so that you shift down one octave. Now it's off. Push it one more time, it'll go down. There. Okay? Okay. So back to logic, okay? 
Um, I want you to open up the interface for this, uh, and that's the same way that you get at the interface for the, the ES1. If you just double click on this little area here, so or actually just single click there, it should open up this monster interface, which looks kind of scary and intimidating at first. Yes? What now? Yeah. So right here, if you don't have this on the screen, you might have this uh, eye not uh, pressed. So there's a, there's a button up at the top left-hand corner that says I Inspector. Make sure that's, that is actually depressed so you can actually see the channel strip and you can actually double click to reveal this interface, okay? Uh, now, this, the, this is the Ultra Beat. This is the interface for the Ultra Beat. Um, and you can, by selecting the different presets, load a different set of drum samples for you to actually work with, okay? My advice on this, it has an integrated sequencer down here at the bottom, you'll see, and it has an on off switch for that sequencer. I would encourage you to avoid that sequencer and instead create your own beats, okay? So avoid this sequencer at the bottom. If I could make it go away, I would make it go away, but I can't, okay? It's built in, it's baked into the plugin, okay? So avoid this sequencer at the, at the bottom. We're instead going to use the built-in MIDI sequencing function in order to create our beats, okay? Um, so let's see here. Uh, this, you, you'll, well, before I leave this screen, you should see that while, when I press certain keys, you see how it lights up here on, on the side? Zoom this way. So what's helpful about this is you should you should see there's a little bit of a description for each key. So while you can't see on your key on your keyboard what uh, per particular drum event is going to be triggered by that key, you can see here that okay a closed hi hat is actually this F sharp. So if I want to create something with a closed hi hat, I can do that. Okay, so this might help orientate you to your different sounds that you have available in your drum sampler, okay, okay. Some people sound like they're having fun already, that's good, okay. So let's create a uh, beat with this, okay. Uh, who remembers how to actually start uh, recording MIDI onto a track, how to create a kind of, uh, let's do, let's do real-time entry, how do I, how would I do that? From my keyboard, being able to play my keyboard, here. Yeah, I was actually, okay, so yeah, I had this loop button here, okay, I can add the cycle so that it will actually loop through four bars, and you can actually, by the way, if you if you decide you want a loop that's only two bars, you can just grab it and reduce it, you can grab it and reduce it even further and create a loop that's one bar, okay, uh, I'm going to go with two bars myself just because, I don't know, it, it'll make it a little bit uh, shorter this time, okay, so that sets up the looping functionality, okay, uh, the other thing I strongly recommend, I strongly recommend, is using the click track, okay? I see more beginning students go astray because they are recording without a click track and they don't actually know where they are in the tempo uh, and things get out of sync and their project gets all of, out of whack and they're actually recording to the metronome. Uh, so I encourage you to, to click this click track here and make sure that that is lit up so it's actually going to create a little clicking noise for you to keep track of the beat, okay? Uh, it turns off when you go to finalize your project, so you don't have to it's, you don't have to keep it there all the time. But I encourage you to to record to that click. Okay. Um, the other thing I encourage you to do, if you slide on over, okay. DAWs are notorious for defaulting to 120 BPM. Okay. Uh, I don't know who decided that 120 BPM was the default tempo for DAWs, but all of them default to 120 BPM. Uh, particularly when you're in these beginning stages of your music production, which uh, I'm assuming you all are, okay, uh, you can, one of the, one trick that you can pull, even when you get into a really advanced circles, is to actually lower this tempo. Ooh, I don't want to do that. I want to do, excuse me, I'll do that. I'm going to click here and type in something like 70, which is much slower. One of the beauties of MIDI is that you can actually record at a slow tempo and then bring it back up to speed and it makes it much easier for you to record your performances particularly if you have limited 
uh, keyboard functionality, okay, in terms of your being able to perform with the pads, okay, and it can it can actually result in you being a little bit more precise, okay. Uh, so we've to recap, we've turned on our metronome, we've turned on our loop. I've lowered the tempo to seventy. I've got my track record enabled. Yes, I should be able to start recording now. There's that click, and you hear how it's much slower than 120 BPM. <coughs> Let me do this. Okay. So Logic will happily wait for you to start playing things. Okay. So don't feel like you have to jump in right away if you need to kind of uh, figure things out. But if you want to, I'll wait for the next one to come around here. I can just let go. So try this out. Pick two notes, pick kind of, um, either two pads or two keys on the keyboard, and record a, a short uh, drum pattern for yourself. Okay, so can I ask you to tune back in for a few tips? So, uh, Turn down your computers or hit, hit stop on your computers so we don't have a, uh, 20 rhythm tracks going at the same time, okay? A um, couple things you can do. I can uh, I, I think I pointed this out last time we were recording in, in uh, Logic with MIDI, right? Uh, you can record new layers right on top of this. So as long as your track is record enabled and your session is on record, I can add in other layers. If you want to be able to try stuff out without actually finalizing it, without actually recording it, you can simply turn off, let's see, hit stop, hit play. So I hit it stop and then play. And what I can then do, I can I can be playing on top of this without it being recorded into the, the region, okay? So where was that? There's my uh, closed hi-hat. I'm going too fast. Yeah, something like that if I wanted to add it. Okay, so I could actually just hit record at this point. Now I've got another layer added in. Basically. Okay, so Logic is happy to let you toggle back and forth between playing and recording, playing and recording, and adding in layers to your drum sequences overall. Okay. Uh, so that's one one tip. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I, I find is that you get into these. Um, let's see. Uh, by default, uh, let me turn off. QuickTime is taking up resources. I can hear my fan going going uh, berserk here. Um, I can zoom in on the vertical axis here, so I can see a little bit more of my uh, piano roll. That gives me a little bit more clarity as far as what's going on. Uh, but the best thing to do would be to double click on this region and it opens up the panel roll at the bottom or to uh, go to view, or no, excuse me, window, open piano roll. And you can actually see this information a little bit more clearly. I'm gonna zoom in here. And the nice thing is that Logic actually here also tells us the name of the, the samples as well. Okay, a um, couple things you can do here, okay, uh, one, if you click on the piano roll on a given key, it's going to select every note event that's on that key, okay, so that's an easy way if you decide that, you know what, closed hi-hat is not the right sound for that, I actually want that to be my uh, mid-tom, I can just select all of them and drag them up, and now... Now it's going to play with the tom, okay? Or I can choose all sorts of different things, okay? I'm going to stick with the closed hi hat for now, though, okay? Um, other things you can do here, uh, if I zoom in on the box a little bit more, I'll just point out that 
what you're seeing here is actually a graphic display of a note on and note off pair. So each one of these bars, each one of these little, uh, I don't know, what do we want to call these? Bars is maybe confusing. Notes, okay, yeah. Each one of these notes icons is actually showing you a note on at the beginning and a note off at the end. It's a pair, basically, of, me of MIDI messages that's being graphed for you here, okay? Um, you can actually, if you, uh, let's see, it's not going to make that much difference with your drum sequencer, but if you want to extend the note, you can do that as well. And I actually have all of them selected, okay? The other thing you can do is, in your tool palette, the thing that I keep referring you back to, we have this other tool called Velocity Tool. Uh, now, Shane mentioned velocity toward the beginning of class when I was talking about the different types of MIDI data. What did I, when I, when uh, Shane mentioned velocity, I kind of redirected it talking about what? Loudness. loudness, right? Okay. So, velocity is MIDI speak for loudness, okay? You can use this velocity tool to click on individual notes and make them louder. So, if you want that one to be louder than this one, So people make a lot of money getting in here and tweaking velocity values and creating a, a more humanized performance in their MIDI uh, data, okay? So there's a lot of uh, work that can be done to kind of uh, improve the, the liveliness, the humanness of your MIDI performance by simply tweaking these velocity values. And you do that, again, by going to the the floating tool palette, and it's it's actually a V for a velocity tool, okay? Is that a hand chase, or is that you stretching? Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, the other thing to note here is that your timing is probably not always going to be perfect, yes? Okay, so one of the key tools in the piano roll is actually what's called the quantize function, okay? What quantize does in the, in the piano roll, in the MIDI functionality, in a MIDI sequencer, is it snaps in your note ons and note offs to specific beats, okay? So I zoomed in quite a way just so you can see this, but if I select these three notes of MIDI performance, okay, and I have this, uh, oh man, I can't see it there. Why is it so small? There we go. I'm gonna stretch this out just so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, so over here on the side, I have this time quantize. I can choose 16th note, which is the default. That's pretty good. And I hit this Q. Uh, we see these two note events right here? When I hit this Q, watch what happens. Let me undo real quick. And we see them kind of jump into place. Okay. What's happening is it's, it's aligning those beat, those note events with specific beats. Okay. And a lot, by lining them up, it's going to improve your overall rhythm, okay? So the quantize function is something you want to get to know, something you want to actually uh, become aware of and actually work with, okay? Uh, particularly as you're gonna, getting used to performing in time, performing with the metronome. Uh, but the quantize, is, the quantize is there to get you the last 10 to 20%, basically. Start with by recording to a metronome, trying to record to the beat, and then lock in using the quantize feature, okay? Is everybody able to, everybody know what I'm talking about? Everybody see this here? And are you able to try that out on your own machine? With the, 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 the beat that you just recorded? Do I need to give you a minute to do that? Because I have plenty more tips and tricks to show you. Everybody try this quantize function because I do want to make sure you know this because that's one thing that I, I know from, from uh, experience that beginners need to, need the quantize function. So yeah, if you if your neighbor's familiar, feel free to grab your neighbor and uh, have them show you the quantize function. Let's see, yeah. Uh, next thing I wanna show you, so just to kind of drive home the point that we are dealing, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's graphed here on the piano roll for, for us, but if you wanna see the actual raw MIDI messages, uh, if you click, you should have a button that looks like this, it says list editors in the upper right hand corner. If you click on that, it's going to open a window. These are your individual note events right here. This is the position of your uh, your note on and it's telling you that the note off actually arrives these uh, fractions of a beat afterwards. You can see the individual uh, pitches here. 
as well as the individual velocity values as well. Okay. Uh, I got to this from the list editor in the up, this upper right-hand corner here, okay? Uh, but what this is showing you is the actual raw MIDI data. Uh, imagine if a world in which you, this is the only thing you had in order to be able to edit your MIDI sequence, basically. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for graphical editors, yes, okay? Uh, but if you want to be able to tweak the individual um, uh, MIDI data, you can actually see the channel, the, the pitch number, the velocity here as well, okay? And the fact that it's a note. It'll play the individual notes as well as you click on them. Okay. Um, let's see. I talked about the list editor. Let's talk about um, some of my favorite uh, tricks. If you click on your uh, MIDI region and you do, uh, let's see, where is it? You have to go control click. MIDI, and there's an option here called separate by note pitch. That will actually take your um, multi-hit drum sequence, and it will break them up into individual regions. So if you decide that you want to have another instrument, say, doubling your kick drum or doubling your snare hits, you can actually pull it out using this. Yes. Yeah, you can have you can have logic do the separation for you again, and I'll do this. I'll undo this. I did that by say control clicking on the region. I go to MIDI, separate by note pitch. Uh, let's see, and I'll, I'll just say this. This has been renamed a few versions ago. So if you hear me, I, I might use a different uh, phrase for this. It used to be called split by pitch, uh, but separate by note pitch. Okay, that gets you to this functionality where it separates out your individual hits into different regions for you, okay? Which again can be handy if you want to double a certain instrument, a certain element of your drum rack, okay? Um, I'm going to undo that and I'm going to go back to a couple of things that are useful when it comes to loop based composition, and that's really what I'm kind of ex expecting you to. Uh, use for these ringtone creations that you're doing is to kind of create a few two bar, one bar, four bar loops and use that as the basis of your composition for this, these ringtones that you're creating, okay? Um, one thing that you'll see is that even though I've created this two bar loop, right, right um, instead of just repeating it over and over again, I can turn off the looping function and I can actually, if I float over to the upper right hand corner of the region and grab, it will actually extend this loop and make further repetitions of the loop. So if I want my two bar loop to actually repeat three times, all I have to do is grab that upper right hand corner and pull, and it extends it. Okay? Now the thing to keep in mind here is this is, as far as logic is concerned, this is one real copy of your loop and two virtual copies of your loop. I'll say that again. One real copy of your loop and then two virtual copies of your loop. If you make changes to the first real copy of your loop, it's going to propagate through the virtual copies. Okay? Sometimes that's what you want, but other times you don't want that. You actually want to create subtle variations between each repetition. If that's what you want, the way you get to that is by hitting control again, and you go down to control click and convert loops to regions. Okay, that will take your virtual copies and it will convert them into real copies so you can edit each one individually, okay? Uh, which is a very handy function if you're trying to create little variations in your loops, okay? Um, let's see here, automation, okay? Some of you have discovered automation by accident because you hit the A key at some point in project one. Who, who did that happen to? I think there were a few people around the room, yes? Yeah. Uh, if you are in logic in this window and you hit A, you're going to see a little uh, extra bit of control pop up. I mean A on your keyboard, not A on your MIDI keyboard, but A on your computer keyboard, okay? So some of you this happened to, uh, and you're going to see that you've got uh, an extra line that pops up here. You can kind of see it very faintly, and you can try this out on your own machine. But what I can do with this line is I can actually create automation in my volume. 
So if I just click the line, it adds a point on the automation curve. If I double click that point, it goes away. I can click and add another one, click and add a fourth one, and turn it down, okay? But what happens now when I hit play, here it fades in, basically. I'm not doing this with my hands, so that's what I'm... Sort of fade out. Okay, so whereas before we were using the uh, fade tool right at the beginning and ending of your projects, basically, uh, I want you to start experimenting with automation. And I will I will try to spend a little bit more time showing you some automation features on Monday. Okay, but I want to just highlight that um, the way you get to that, the way you actually access that, is just by hitting the A key. Okay, it's almost a hidden layer on top of your your MIDI regions on, on all of your tracks. Okay. When you hit the A, it exposes automation, and you can just simply click to add points and click to drag them and make changes to your uh, volume automation, okay? Um, and when you're done with it, you just hit A, and it goes away, okay? Uh, the final thing I want to show you is the loops library, and I hesitate to show you this because it's not technically MIDI, but it's going to add a whole new source of sounds for your projects, okay? Um, I'm, I'm allowing you to use this for this project, but I want you to deploy it in a very limited fashion, okay? Uh, the loops library exists over here. I, I had you actually look at, we, we dealt with uh, project clips uh, last time, but you should have this other little kind of like curly Q look here. And when you open that up, uh, you should see at the bottom, mine has 21,349 items in it. How many does yours have? 23,000. So you've got more loops than me, basically, okay? These are little short sound files, little short sound loops that you can actually use to build up your project, okay? Uh, you can preview them by simply... And some of them exist in a family. So when you see something that says, like this one does, 12-string dream 01... They're going to be kind of related sound clips, related sound loops, okay? You can simply drag and drop these into your project for your loop-based combination to add layers to it, okay? Um, but my caveat here is I want you to use these in a limited fashion because they, these are not technically MIDI, but they will help enhance your project overall, okay, by adding some, some, um, some real acoustic loops to them, okay? So I'm... I'm, I'm Brushing this as a kind of a feature, if you will, okay? Um, let's see. Those are the things I wanted to show you in Logic. Do I need to show you how to actually add those to your project? It's pretty simple. You pick one you like. And even if you don't have a track, if you just simply drag it into the project, it'll, it'll add it. Actually, some of them are MIDI. Oh, so I guess the green ones are MIDI, the blue ones are sound files. Great. Okay, so here's my 12-string dream with my drum loop that I created. Okay. I don't know that that works. That's probably not the best choice, but I don't have time to go through all 23,000 of them. Yes, okay. But you see how that can help you. If for those of you that are stuck on the kind of uh, accessing things uh, and typing in things by MIDI, this could be a way to add a few extra layers from, from ready-made loops over here on the side, okay? Um, any questions about this? I know I kind of was, it felt a little scattershot to me today, so I apologize in that regard, basically, but hopefully I've shown you some features uh, I need to kind of do a quick kind of recap of Project 2 instructions and restrictions, but are there any questions about logic before I do that? This loops on the side. You should have this icon right here, and it'll say Apple Loops when you float over it. Yep. Okay. So, yes, uh, if you created something that you think might be a viable ringtone, go ahead and save it. I'll, or if not... Uh, Okay.